ordinary people that are so deeply in love with Jesus that they can't help but go and talk about him. Hello church and welcome to Home Groups. I am so excited you're here and that we were able to get you connected in a home group. In case you don't know who I am, my name is Josh. I'm a volunteer here at Aspire and I head up home group ministries as well as youth ministries. Now, I wanted to take a moment before we jump into home groups and give you guys the expectation, right? What to expect. Now, this could be your first time in a home group and you may have been coming for years. Either way, this is a slightly new format and I really wanted to take the time to explain it to you. Now we couldn't be more excited about what we're doing and that's going to a partially video format. Your leaders were given a DVD and every DVD has each week of home groups. What they'll do is select the week and play the video. You'll see an intro followed by a video just like this where you're looking at a leader from Aspire who is talking to you guys via video. This could be anybody at Aspire Church. Now, what they want to do is connect with you about something they're passionate about. And they're going to do this via Sermon Jam. Now, I know, you're probably asking yourself, Josh, what's a Sermon Jam? It's nothing spectacular, you guys. It's simply a clip of a sermon. So what the, it is, is somebody who listened to an entire sermon felt a big impact from a, a portion of it and want to share it with you. So it's a three to five minute video of a much larger sermon. Now this could be from any pastor in the world. It could be Pastor John MacArthur, it could be John Piper, it could be Francis Chan or Matt Chandler. And one of the leaders wants to tell you about this clip. They're gonna say, this sermon had a big impact on me in this way. And this is what I want you guys to look for as you listen to it and maybe some things to think about and discuss amongst your own home groups. Once the leader has introduced the video clip, it will play and you'll see the sermon jam play. Once it's over, you can shut your TVs off. That portion is over. Next is the discussion questions. Now, we give you guys plenty of discussion questions to keep the conversation going, but that's not the point. The point of home groups isn't some homework to do from church on Sundays, not at all. The point of home groups is to connect. So if you get through a couple or you get through all of them, that's okay. We want you guys to focus on being there for one another, carrying each other's burdens, sharpening one another, and connecting for life. That's the point of home groups. Now, we hope that you guys truly enjoy this new format. Again, I couldn't be more excited about it myself. I think it combines so many different things to give you guys the best experience. But I am always open for feedback. So if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback, please go ahead and reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to hear what you have to say. Now, I'm gonna leave you to your home groups. Please, be honest, be open, and get connected like never before. The point is to do life together and to grow together. Thank you, church. I look forward to this semester of home groups. Hello again, and welcome to the official week one of home groups. I am so excited you guys are here and connected to follow us on our new journey and new platform for home groups. Again, my name is Josh. I'm a volunteer at Aspire, and I lead home groups as well as youth ministry. Now, I'm so excited because I get to give you guys your very first taste of this format, as well as introduce you to one of my favorite clips of all time. Now, that clip is by Pastor Francis Chan, and he's a personal hero and role model of mine because of the way he lives out what he preaches. Now, the clip is titled Balance Theme, and it's very impactful to me because what it talks about is are you just giving the minimum or are you giving it your all in your faith? And the way I want to break that down is this. Are you playing it safe or are you living in faith? Let me say it again. 
Are you playing it safe or are you trusting in faith? That's what I want us to really listen for in this video. And as you watch it, I want you to ask yourself, have I been given just the minimum? Have I truly been trusting that God will provide and doing exactly what he's called me to do? Now maybe for you that's giving more time, uh, more of your finances, maybe that's reaching out to more family and friends with the gospel. I don't know what it is for your life, but I wanna ask the question, are we playing it safe like we're scared and trusting in worldly things or are we playing in a way where we know that we're living out God's will for us to advance his kingdom, trusting that he will always provide? Now, when I watched this clip the first time, I thought of Matthew chapter 10. Now, if you'd like and you have your Bibles, please open up with me to Matthew chapter 10, beginning at verse 27. Jesus says, What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both the body and the soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside of our Father's care. And even the hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You're worth much more than many sparrows. Jesus goes on to say, if you acknowledge me before others, I will also acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. But if you disown me before others, I will disown you before my Father in heaven. Don't suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. For whoever finds their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. That's the big part to me that we take up our own cross and we not worry about our own lives and what will happen to it, but instead we give our lives fully to Jesus to do his will and to trust in his plan. So again, are you living it safe or are you trusting in faith? Enjoy the next clip, you guys, and I'm excited to see you guys next week. We will have a new leader giving you their favorite message and how it impacted them. Thank you. It was, uh, a lot of you guys know my mom died giving birth to me. Then my dad remarried. Then my stepmom died in a car accident when I was nine. Then my dad got married again. Then my dad died of cancer when I was 12. And so I'm in junior high. My mom's dead. My stepmom's dead. My dad's dead. The only close relatives I had were my, my aunt and uncle, George and Sandra. And then when I was in high school, they got in a fight, and my uncle George shot and killed my aunt, and then stuck the gun to his own head, killed himself. So I'm 16 years old, and this is life to me, going, man, what's next? Everything seems to be falling apart, and we get a little worried, we get a little scared. And this is what Christians do, you know, they try to serve God, but then things get a little rocky. And things get a little unstable. And so we go, okay, that was nuts. I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to live like that. Let me, uh, let me hold on. And this is your routine. This is what so many people do. They go, you know what? I'm not going to try anything crazy. I'm just going to sit here. And uh, I'm just going to hold on. And uh, this is what you look like. You just go, uh, this is what people do. You know what? I'm just going to have my nice little family. We're just going to... Um, you know, we're just going to keep to ourselves. We're going to live in a gated community. I'm going to homeschool my kids, make them wear helmets everywhere. I'm going to, um, you know, I'm not going to let them outside because sun has bad rays. I'm going to, um, you know, just on and on and on. And you just live your life in the safety of I don't want to do anything crazy for God. I just, I just want to, you know, go to church on Sundays and maybe give like 2%. Um, and uh, maybe serve help the nursery because I feel guilty. And then you do this your whole life, 
And then you, you go, your greatest prayer is like, God, you know what? I would love to die in my sleep and not even feel it and then just go up to heaven. And so th you want to die like this, just in your sleep, ooh, right in the middle of a dream, good dream, the dream you're going to heaven and you don't even feel it. And then suddenly you wake up, you stand before the judge and you go. <laughs> now, if... Uh, Could you imagine, could you imagine watching the Olympics, you know? And some girl does that, just gets up there, starts straddling the thing, and then steps off and goes. <laughs> what is the judge supposed to do on the card? You see, and to me, I go, man, that's the routine that so many Christians are headed for. That's the routine, the boring, I do nothing crazy because I don't want to fall. I, I, that's the routine that they're going to live and then one day it's going to be a shock because they're going to step off that balance beam and realize they're standing before the judge. They're standing before the judge and you think he's going to look at that routine and go, wow, well done. Well done. You live the safest life possible you didn't slip, you didn't fall. See, that's not the life that God's called us to. That's where the majority will head, but I don't want to go where the majority goes.